Um, and it also it also has a lot of pre-built templates. If you don't have any design experience or you don't think you're very good at design, um, they just have templates that you can use and recolor and kind of move things around um, that can kind of help build confidence while you're still learning. Um, also, Canva Pro, very helpful if you are doing social media marketing for other people. You don't necessarily need it if you're just doing it for yourself. Um, it has a built-in brand kit functionality, which I find is very useful, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like a little later. Um, so what can you use Canva for? Well, you can use it for a lot of stuff. As I touched on, you can put create reports, you can create pitch decks, um, you can actually create branded products or company swag. They have, just like with business cards, they have options to actually buy a physical product. So you can like create a, a design for a tote bag and then buy like however many tote bags with that design on it if you want. So it's great for like company swag or branded products. Um, as I just said, you can create brand kits or, or create style guides for your company or for other companies if you consult. Um, email or website assets like icons, banners. A lot of the banners actually on my company's website I created through Canva. Um, and then social media marketing and much more. Um, the reason social media marketing is bolded, as I said, that's kind of where I sit most happily and, and what I do day to day. Um, so just really quickly to go into social media marketing, um, I'm sure all of you probably have some kind of social media for your company. Um, and it is, it, it's ubiquitous. You kind of need to have social media in this, this day and age. Everybody that you want to reach is already in some way. It's a great way to keep track of competitors, uh, get seen by your target audience, um, and then promote your products or services if you're not hiring your marketing out to somebody else. Um, you can also use social media as an integration on your own website. So you can have like a social media feed going on your website. Um, you can also backlink from your social media to your website or from your website to your social media, which can help increase your site's authority score if you're trying to improve your search engine optimization. Um, and now some people may be like, well, my, my demographic is really old people or, you know, <laughs> my demographic probably isn't on social media to that. I will say your demographic probably is on social media. Um, most people are using at least one type of social media. As you can see, Facebook and YouTube are the two kind of most common. Um, but there are a lot of intersections where if you're building a persona, if you're building a target audience of, of you know, I, my ideal customer is Jane, she's 45, she's a stay-at-home mom, you know, she's got like 2.5 kids and a picket fence. Um, you can start looking at the intersections of, of where Jane might be. Um, on social media and then start targeting those platforms. So you don't need to have every social media, you just want to be where your customers are. Um, so social media marketing is a type of, of inbound marketing, meaning that basically you're creating useful or informative content and you're putting it out for people to come find you. And those people will, will see you as an authority um, and remember your name because they remember that you, you already gave them some kind of useful thing um, instead of just trying to sell them things or like buying ad space to put like, you know, use my service <laughs> um, in front of them. Um, so they're more likely to regard you a little bit better because it's not, it's not as like obnoxious as like the pre-roll YouTube ads where you're like, you know, I just, I don't want to see this. I just want to see the video that I want to watch. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can delight your audience. Um, you can attract them with beautiful graphics, things like that. And these are all things that Canva will help you do. Um, with social media, regular posting cadence is key. Um, and then there are different, as I said, there are different platforms to promote different forms of content. Different target audiences are gonna be on different platforms um, and different like age brackets or um, occupations are going to respond better or engage better with different forms of media like video photo podcast which would be audio things like that um and then lastly tags exist for a reason use them make sure you don't just don't just like stop tags in your social media posts make sure you're tagging things that your target audience is is you know gonna want to see 
All right, so now we're going to do a quick platform tour because the easiest way to learn Canva is by doing it. <laughs> so we're going to pop in. Um, this will be a little different because it is such a big platform. Um, if you have a question, just raise your hand or type it into the chat um, and I will try to answer as we go um, because there's a lot. <laughs> um, so I've currently got two types of Canva open. One is my personal Canva, which is the free version. That's um, this homepage right here. And then the other is a paid version of Canva, which is, um, I'll get to my, well, open another thing, um, which is this one right here. It looks very similar, except all you're gonna see is on the homepage, the little crowns here are gray, which means that this is the paid version. Whereas if you come to the free version, these crowns are gold, which means that this is a paid feature and I'm not going to be able to access that unless I pay for Canva Pro. Um, as I said previously, the free version already has a lot of functionality. I'm going to show you designing something in the free version of Canva. Um, there's, you know, tons of resources, tons of assets, elements, things that you can do, and you don't really need the pro unless you're designing a lot of social media graphics for a lot of people and doing brand kits and, and style guides and things like that. Um, so you probably aren't going to need that expense. So the homepage of Canva, you can see there are, there's a lot going on. <laughs> um, across the top here is kind of just a little bit more about Canva, the different plans they have. If you're working with any kind of kids or doing any education, um, they do have like partnerships and programs that they do for kids and for educators, as well as deals that they do for business, like different industries and different departments within a company. Um, and they also spotlight various different things like their logo maker, or their banner maker, things like that. Um, the Canva Design School is actually under Learn. So if you get really into Canva after this, you're like, I really want to learn this platform and I don't feel like I got enough out of this hour. Um, the Design School is right here. It gives you tutorials. So if you don't quite understand something that I talk about today, um, you can find tutorials there. And you can also have courses um, where if you want to learn a little bit more about the various aspects of graphic design, um, they'll teach you that for free. This is also where you can find the help center. Um, so if you, you know, if you have any technical difficulties, you can just shoot them a message or look at the FAQs and hopefully that'll help clear things up for you. Um, so here on the left side is your toolbar. This is where you're going, probably the easiest place where you can find um, your projects and everything that you design. Um, the home page is obviously this, where you can see all of the stuff that I've recently worked on. Um, the templates page is actually not templates that you created. It's templates that Canva has created that you can use for free. Um, and they've got a lot of templates. They've got templates for things that you probably didn't even know you wanted or you probably don't want. Um, so you can see there's, you know, presentations, there are different templates for social media, and that's like most social medias. They've got everything from like just the square Instagram post to Instagram reels, um, Instagram stories. You can have WhatsApp statuses, Facebook covers, LinkedIn statuses, all sorts of things. Um, basically, if you need a static or small like video or GIF for your presentation or for your social media, they've got they've got some form of it. Um, and these are all filled in. These all have designs already. You can also choose just to have a blank one, which I'll, I'll show you how to do in a second. Um, as well, you've got things like print products. These are what I was talking about with company swag. There's mouse pads, bumper stickers, calendars, sweatshirt, business cards, all sorts of stuff. Um, so if you ever want any company swag, if you want a branded notebook, you can buy it straight off of Canva. You don't need to go through any kind of like Vista print um, or like any print company. Um, going back to the home. Oh, so you would design it there and also. Yeah, so you would design it. Yeah, you design would design it in the design tote bag. Exactly. What I was talking yeah, about. you would you would design the tote bag in Canva and be like, oh, yep, I want like twenty tote bags, and you could just buy that right off of off of the Canva website. Um. So here in this projects tab, this is where you're gonna find all of your projects. So if there's something that you need that you haven't edited in a really long time, 
um, this is where you're going to find it. You can also here, you can have different folders. I currently don't have any, but if you look at like my company camera, I've actually got quite a few. Um, so if you're looking to design a lot of different things or have different ad campaigns, um, there's tons, you can, you can create tons of folders to keep things organized. Um, I think you can also pin stuff. I've never done that. Um, and yeah, you can see your recent and your designs. Oh, this is shared with you. This is the stuff that's been shared with me. So if I go up here, all projects, then you can see all of my designs that I've ever done, as well as all of the things that I've uploaded, all of the images I've uploaded on this account. Um, I like to go through and occasionally purge this because it does get really crowded and you'll see why it's important to purge this in a second. Um, but this is where you find all of the things you uploaded, all of the things that you've worked on, um, and then all of your folders and things like that. Um, if you're working with a team, they also have a, a team option. Um, this is a way to easily share things with anybody else you might be working with. Um, if you are, you know, designing something, but you regularly look to other people for, you know, a second set of eyes or for extra input, um, the team is a great way to just, you don't have to keep sharing it with their email. You can just share the team and they'll automatically get that design. Without <clears throat> needing to upload it to like the box or mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. Like yeah. You're not going to need to like, if I click into this, I'm, I'm not going to need to just like keep putting emails in. Mm -hmm. um, you can just, you can just go share to team, which I don't think I have on this. Um, yeah, I can share people, share to team, and then that will go to my entire team. Mm -hmm. um, as well, just scrolling down the toolbar here, I'm going to come back to Canva Pro just to show you the brand kit and the content planner functionality. Um, so brand kits are basically, if I click into my company brand kit, brand kits allow you to very easily put all of your color hex codes in. So if you have company colors, um, and you don't want to have to keep typing in that hex code all the time. This is a great way when you're in the workspace to very quickly be able to find all of the fonts you need, all of the colors you need, all of your logos, things like that, because they're all in your brand kit here. And those will show up in the brand kit um, option on the workspace. Is that in Freeboard also? Or just no, this is, a, this is a Canva Pro feature. Um, as well with Canva Pro, you get your content calendar feature, which is, it allows you to schedule things ahead of time. So if I know that I want to put out like an Instagram post on the 24th, um, I can click the plus and I can choose, I'll just choose this. Um, Open the pro also, right? Yes. Um, I can choose, I'll just choose this design here. I can select the channel. I currently don't have any social medias integrated with this Canva account because we have like a CRM marketing automation platform already. And that's going to give me a lot more data all in one place. I don't want to be pulling data from different places. Um, but if I if I didn't have a marketing automation platform, um, I could integrate like my Slack or my Instagram or my Facebook or LinkedIn with Canva and post directly to that. Um, and this editorial calendar feature allows me to schedule that ahead of time. So let's say I want to you know post to Facebook. Um, I would just click that. Right now, it's it's going to say connect Facebook because I don't have it connected. But if you did have Facebook already connected, it would select Facebook. Um, then this is a multi-page um, graphic. I only want to share page one, so I'm going to just come in here and click page one. Um, and then if I want to write any kind of caption, I can do that as well. This is really nice for Instagram specifically because Instagram, if you try to post through the app, you can't press enter, like you can't have any kind of paragraph breaks unless you write the copy somewhere else and like paste it into your Instagram description. So this is a great way to have those paragraph breaks um, right there in that. Um, and then once I'm done, once I'm satisfied with the caption and, and with, you know, I've, I've double checked that this is the right graphic and I like the way it looks, um, I can schedule it. And then that would, it would set for the 24th. Um, and then it would just automatically post them and forth. So that's a great functionality if you don't have marketing automation, if, if you know you want to start collecting data about who's how many people have viewed it, how many clicks has it gotten, what interactions has it gotten. Um, 
the, the editorial calendar is a great way to plan that out ahead of time and then also start collecting that information if you haven't started yet. Uh, any questions so far? Yeah, so um, how does the uh, pro version work? Do you need to like physically download the um, the software on it? Nope. Or is it more like a like it's a web all description? it's all web design. It's a I think an annual, it's a monthly or annual subscription. Um, and if you have a company Canva Pro, you can have like a certain number of members on that team. And then every member after that would be an extra, I think like hundred something dollars a year. Mm -hmm. um, but no, it's all of Canva is done through the browser. the browser. So you don't need to download anything. Um, basically all that, that getting the subscription will do is just automatically unlock those extra features that have, or those extra assets that have gold crowns. Um, if you want to do a slide presentation, is that in the free version? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, uh, they have every like every design, every template mm -hmm. or size that you need. It's all in the free version. Okay. What the pro version is going to do is just unlock a couple extra features, um, as well as you'll see when we if we come over here to create a design. I'm going to just do an Instagram post because that's what I'm used to. A square. If I so you can see I type in Instagram. There's like. 10 different options for things that I can choose for Instagram. So they get, they get really, really specific where you're like, oh, I want a portrait Instagram instead of a square Instagram post for some reason. Um, and they have that pre-sized. You don't need to like know any kind of sizing, um, but this will, if I click this, this will be blank. So this is just a blank white square. It's my starting canvas in the workspace. Um, and it's already correctly sized to Instagram. So I don't need to do anything, worry about things not loading properly. Um, and so like, um, is there a template also for creating an ad, like a magazine ad? Um, magazine ad, I've never tried, but let's look it up. And like, if you needed to send, I don't know, a PDF to the magazine or yes. a TIFF, whatever, would there be a way to save your work as that particular? Mm -hmm. Yes. File. Yep. There's a lot of different, well, I'll show you in a second. There's a lot of different like types of files that you can save these things as. Um, I mean, if it's a full page thing, they have an eight by five, 8.5 by 11. Um, these all look like covers. Um, but what you can also do, if you don't see what you need, you can come down here to custom size. And if you know the size of what you're trying to design for, they have it in pixels, inches, millimeters, centimeters. And you can just type the size in there um, and then create a new design. And that will that will create a, um, a, a project that is the correct yeah. size. Um, so this is the basic workspace when you start a new um, project. It's currently untitled. If I want to change the name of it, um, or do practice um, design, we'll name it practice design. Um, it automatically cloud saves, so you don't need to worry about work not being saved unless there's some you make an, a change and then like immediately after your internet cuts out or something. Um, the resize is one of the functionalities that you can only get with Canva Pro. Basically what this does is if you create a graphic and you realize, oh crap, this is not the right size, but I've already put a ton of work into this, um, the Pro version will allow you to just automatically resize either to a set kind of aspect ratio of whatever you're trying to resize to or to a custom ratio um, if it's not a set thing. Um, this is also where you can show like show rulers and guides so you can see, you know, what does the size look like? You can show margins. So that's going to show you, this is already going to show up when you start populating the, the workspace with elements or with assets. Um, but if you want to see that, that margin guide just automatically, you can have that enabled, um, as well as like saving to specific folders and, um, viewing version history, which is another pro feature. So basically if you, what that is, is if you make an edit and then like 12 hours later after like a ton of other edits, you realize, oh crap, something that I did, I actually really liked and I want that back, but I don't know how to find like what I did. That's where version history comes in, where you can revert the graphic to a previous version. Did you get there by hitting create a design and starting with um, whiteboard? 
Um, so what I did is I, I went into create a design yep. and not in custom size. Um, I just typed in, in this case, it's an Instagram graphic. So I just typed in in INS and you can already see it's populating with Instagram things. Um, and then I just clicked Instagram post square and that's, that's how this came up. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn off rulers and margins just because I don't. Um, so the, another place that you can find templates, they're all, the, all over the, all over the place, but, um, you can see the first thing that your workspace populates on the sidebar is templates. Um, and they actually have themed templates around the current season. So fall food back to school, because it's, you know, back to school season, Labor Day just happened. So they've got Labor Day. If I click that, they've got like different templates for, for Labor Day. I can also search like if I want to be designing something for Easter or something, I can search Easter and now I'm getting Easter templates. So then you click the one you want and does it- Exactly. Does it so I'll search something even like even more abstract than Easter. I'll search minimalists. Um, maybe that's the aesthetic that I'm looking for. So I'll be like, oh, I like this one. And I click it and it automatically populates the workspace. And then you could put your logo on there. Yeah, you can put your logo on there. You can like, I can, if I don't like this background color, I can like choose a different background color from the set ones, or I can type in a hex code. Um, and then how would we get that to Instagram? Like if you wanted to post it on your story. Um, so that's, that would be where the share comes in. Okay. Um, you can see when you click share, it's already saying, do you want to post to Instagram? Okay. Do you want to present this? Um, if I want to load this into my marketing automation software, um, that would be where I would click download. Okay. And you can yeah. see, I can choose a lot of different types of like file types to download. So I can download this as a JPEG or a PNG. Mm -hmm. if you're uploading to Instagram. You're going to want to do a PNG. Um, I can do two different types of PDFs, one which is a standard PDF, which is best for just if you're like writing a resume and like emailing a resume with a lot of words, you're looking to actually print something that would be where PDF print would come in because it loads things. It's a bigger file size, but it loads things in, in a lot higher quality. And you could print it. Yeah. Um, SVG, I've never really used. That's another pro feature. Um, I don't do a lot of web designer animations, so it's I never really use this, but you can also download things as MP4 videos because you can create short videos in Canva um, as well as GIFs. So if you want to have a GIF looping on your website somewhere, you can create that here and download it as a GIF. Um, what does that stand for? Generated. <laughs> okay, here you go, Lula. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Um, GIFs. GIFs are like the little things that the little like animations yep. that you see okay. on websites. Yeah. I know what they are. I'm like, I never, sometimes I'm like, what is that? Mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know. Like, my kids like send me the yeah, it's three a, letter abbreviations. It's a hot okay. debate whether it's pronounced <laughs> GIF or GIF. <laughs> um, yeah. And then you can see that there's a lot of different, when you have Canva Pro, there's a lot of different like saving settings. So you can compress the file or you can have the background be transparent. I've never used transparent background unless I'm designing a logo. Um, so I don't really find that to be too unhelpful. Um, the compressed file I've also never used because I'm not sending a lot of like insane stuff. And most of the time, if I have multiple pages, it's going to download as a zip file anyway, which is already pre-compressed. So it's not, it's not critical to have that feature. Um, you can also save your download settings. So if I'm like wanting to create like 500 pages on here, um, but I only ever want to download, like I, I only ever want to download them as a PN or a PDF print. Um, and I don't want to have to keep, you know, every single time I create a new page, I don't want to have to keep like selecting PDF print because the automatic is going to, or the automatic selection is going to be a PNG. Um, I can just click save download settings. Um, I don't know why it's telling me to download with Canva for teams. Um, but I, it's making you pay for download. It's I think it's giving you the option to upgrade to a premium image for that's new. They used to not make you pay for downloads. Interesting. Oh, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, of this. it's because of the watermark. Um, there's a, a bit of premium content on this that is watermarked. That's why it's making you pay. Um all right, so if we 
I'm gonna delete this, all these pages. If we start talking about let's create, you know, let's create a graphic for our fake bridal company that we all own and run now <laughs> for the next 20 minutes. Um, so the workspace, we have a, we currently have a, a background color now, which I'm gonna just remove. So I'm gonna make that white. So we're now restarting with a blank, blank canvas. Um, if I want to change the background color, basically what I'm going to do is just, this is going to highlight purple. I'm going to click that. It'll stay purple when it's highlighted. And then I come up here to this background color area um, and I can choose either default colors. And then like, if I want something yellow, I can choose that and be like, this is too bright. Let me make that lighter. Or if I have a hex code of like a creamy white that I know I like, um, I can just type that in and it'll automatically change to that color. Um, How did you get the color bar to drop in there? So if you're if you're here on the workspace, yep. you see how I'm hovering that that's lighting up purple. You click that and then this gradient will come up. And then if you hover over that, it'll say background color. You click that and that'll turn into that toolbar. Um, so the next thing we're going to want to do is populate it with some kind of photo because I want a photo in the background. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either choose a frame, which is going to populate in one specific size, and then you can resize it, which is not super useful for me because I want the frame to take up the entire page and I want it to just be automatic. So the other thing that you can choose is grids, which if I click this square grid right here, that'll just populate the entire page at once with a single thing. There are different types of frames and grids as well. If I wanted different ratios of like three or four or five photos, they do have different grids as well as different shapes of frames, including frames without like with borders versus not with borders. Um, so there's a lot of different functionality and all of these you can see are, are free to use. These have no paywall. They don't have a like a little gold crown next to them. So you can use all of these without having to worry about upgrading or having a watermark. So I've got my, my grid in the background. I've got my photo, my kind of, it's ready for my photo. And we're a, um, a bridal company. So we're gonna have a wedding dress. So let's search, I can actually, you can see in recent wedding dress. Um, if I wanna further refine the search, I can click here. I only want color or um, photos that have like a blue color to them. And I only want them to be, I don't know, horizontal orientation. I can apply filters and you, you see it's starting to populate things that are only mainly blue <laughs> and horizontal orientation. Um, if I decide, wow, these are horrible selections and I don't like these, uh, I can clear the filters <laughs> and I can start over <laughs> with wedding dress. And then I can be like, okay, let me just scroll through these photos that come up. So it looks like a lot of them or most of them have the gold crown that says those are not available. Yeah. So if I click a, a, a photo that has a gold crown, um, you, you can see it'll come up with watermarks. Mm -hmm. If I click remove watermark, you can pay mm -hmm. to get the image. So if you only want that one image and you don't want to have to pay for premium, you can pay $1 to unlock that image. Um, otherwise, there are a lot of other photos that you can choose that don't have that watermark. But at least you don't have to have pro yeah. or premium to get those. Yeah. Um, there are also different, there's like other photo sites. So this is Pexels is an automatic integration they have that I think all of these are automatically like they're um, open source or creative commons. So if I search wedding dress in here, um, you can see I'm getting a lot of really nice photos and none of these are paid because these are all creative commons. Um, so even if you're seeing something in the photos tab that, you know, oh, wow, there's a lot of gold crowns, there's pixels. If I come down here to more, there is also Pixton, which I've never used. There's Pixabay, which I don't have tons of luck with, but there's a lot of other integrations and other like creative commons resources that are automatically integrated that you're going to be able to find what you want anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna come back here to photos. So we're scrolling through photos, we're scrolling through photos and say, oh, wow, that's a really pretty photo. <laughs> Let me see what this looks like loaded up in the grid. You can see that's already snapping and auto adjusting, but the bride is really small. There's a lot of like random 
like desert in the background, I don't wanna have that much desert. If I highlight the photo and click it, you can see there's a purple frame around it now. Um, and I come over here to crop. I can now crop this woman it closer into the frame. I have just press enter and now the crop is complete. And if I hover this now, it's automatically gonna load in and the bride is easier to see because I've cropped the photo closer to her. Um, so another great feature of Canva, if I come here to text and I'm like, I wanna, you know, I wanna now put text over this bride. Um, there are, you can either have your brand kit text if you have a brand kit, you can add a heading, just automate like um, an automatic heading, which is always gonna load in with open sans because that's Canva's default heading font. Um, and then I can scroll through, they have a lot of pro headings, but also a lot of free headings. And then I can scroll through headings and be like, oh, I want, you know, I like this, this looks really nice. And I can see what that looks like on top of the photo. Um, I can also change the size of the font. So maybe this is too small for me. Um, I can come over here to this A and change the text color. Um, I'm gonna make that bright red. That's not easy to see. What if we make this, you know, we'll change it back to black, but we, well, you can't bold this one. Um, but we take one that you can bold um, and now I'm bolding it or I can italicize it. Um, there's a lot of different stuff you can do there. If you're like, I'm not good at choosing fonts, I'm not good at matching fonts together. I just like, you know, I just want to find a font combination that I like. They do have font combinations already. You can see that these are a couple. They have, these are a lot of extra like special fonts with effects. But if you look at like Dazzle Eau de Parfum, Eau de Parfum um, these are two different fonts. This was Glacial Indifference up here and down here. Oh, that's just a different form of Glacial Indifference, but here, we use this one. Um, Did you cover how to drop your own photos in? Uh, how to upload your own photo? Yeah, if you want to use your own photo yeah. versus stock. So to do that, if you're pulling a photo from a web, from the web, you can just copy paste it. I can go over to Google Images. Oh, well, sorry, the zoom is being like, there we go. I can go over to Google Images and search like wedding and go to images. And I can just like, I'm like, oh, this is nice. I can copy this copy image. Um, and I can come over here and then I can paste it and it'll just load right in. If I have the image on my computer, you can just come over here to upload files. It'll bring up a dialog box, it'll just upload an icon. Um, and then it'll populate here in your sidebar and you click it and it comes into the workspace. So if you have your own photos or say to your desktop, you can drag it in mm -hmm. and use it. Yeah. Um, all right, so there's, I have a, font combination that I like for this example specifically, and it's the summer sale combination. Um, so this is one of the automatic font combinations that comes up. I think it looks very nice for this specific aesthetic. You can see it already has kind of a bit of a border. And when I'm dragging the sides of the summer sale font combination, you can see that everything is kind of auto sizing with this. And that's because this summer sale font combination is grouped, it's currently grouped. Um, which when you group elements, um, they move as one. And when you resize one thing, it'll automatically resize everything else in the proper ratio. So if I wanna edit all of these things separately and I wanna start moving text around, what I'm gonna do is come up here and click ungroup. And now you can see everything is individually highlighted in purple, um, which if I click off, now I can then like choose the border I'm like, I want to make the border a different color. Um, maybe I want this border to be a very pretty blue um, and I can change the color of the border. Maybe this is like, this is not what I want. Um, let's, maybe our tagline is, is celebrating you. Um, and it's like, oh wow, that's really small. There's two ways to resize text now. You can either, if you wanna, if you have like a lot of other stuff going on and you've got like text down here, um, but I only wanna resize this top line, I highlight it and I can say, let's make this 45. 
And now that bottom text will stay the same and the top text will resize. Um, or if I just have the one, the one line um, and I am like, okay, that's, that's fine, let's resize it. Um, I can just select and highlight the entire box and it's now lighting up purple. Um, and I don't need to go in, I don't need to highlight any text. I can then just come in and it will, it will automatically resize without editing the text box at all. Um, so let's name our bridal company. Oops. Um, and so we've named our bridal company and we're like, okay, I like this font combination, but look at the way that the, the photo is, is kind of taking over everything. We can't really effectively read our, our company name because the photo is, is too bright. Um, I'm just going to move this out of the way of this frame. There's a couple things that we can do. We can either replace the photo completely, or we can come up here to this little checked thing called transparency, and I can reduce the transparency and see if that helps at all. So as you can see, as I'm moving this to zero, it's making it completely transparent to the point where I can't see the photo anymore. Whereas if I have it here at like 60, you can still see the photo, but it's not so like in your face and you can really see the text a lot better. So that's a much better contrast. But me, sorry? No, sorry. Um, so uh, just a quick question. So are there layers here? Kind of like there, you, 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 we have layers like in, in um, Illustrator. So oh, you like you kind of access the whatever is on that layer and you modify only that. Or, it's, or it's, you kind of need to move things out of the way. You kind of need to move things out of the way. Okay. There's no, um, yeah, there's no like layers that you can specifically right. move to. You can reorder things. So if I right click, I can send backward, send to back, bring send to front, things, things like that. Right. But you're not going to have those like layer one, right. layer two, layer three that you can rename and, and individually click on. Mm -hmm. So that is something that an, an Illustrator or Photoshop right. or something like Krita would have over Canva if you're looking to do something that's very layer intensive. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Of course. So um, anyway, so we, we've we lowered the transparency or we've increased the transparency. We've made this a little bit easier to look at, but maybe I'm not still not completely satisfied with this photo. Um, if I come over here and right click, you can find the detach image portion. And what this will do is allow me to remove this image and get that grid back up ready for a new photo. Um, and then I can choose something else and put that in if I like that better. Um, the other thing that you can do as well is generally you can just take another image and you can hover it right over the frame and it'll auto populate as well. So you don't need to go through the detach image step, but if you just if you don't have a photo yet and you're like, let me have this, this frame or this grid as a placekeeper, um, you could detach image and, and just have that frame by itself. Um, so let's say we like this photo and we're happy with that again. Um, the opacity looks good. Um, Does we'll... the new photo go in with the same transparency mm -hmm. as the one yep. that you did before, or does it come? Because the so the photo, when you when you have a grid or a frame, um, this grid or frame, when you put the photo into it, it auto groups them. So anything that you do to the photo, it's going to do to the frame and vice versa. Um, but when you remove, when you detach the image from, from the frame, the frame is going to keep that, whatever you've done to it. Yeah, it's going to keep the sizing. It's not going to, it's not going to go back to its default. Sorry. So when you say like, it's going to keep, like, it's going to keep the celebrating, you know, and, and basically those pieces. So, yeah, so these actually, these aren't part of the, the grid. The okay. grid specifically refers to when I put something like this in. The background. Yeah. Um, so everything on top of this, this is text. This is different. Right. It doesn't populate on the grid. Okay. Um, what you can also do is if you want to make a lot of edits on top of it, um, you can lock layers. So kind of similar to what you would be able to do in Illustrator. If you're like, I don't want to ever have to worry about moving this around or selecting this, this background is fine, it's good, we're done. And you just click lock. And now anytime I select anything else to move, that grid is not going to move. It's going to stay there. So what is the advantage of putting like doing the 
putting that frame template in and then dropping the picture on it versus just dropping the picture straight it, in. It allows you, if you're trying to go through a lot of different photos or if you're creating a template that, you know, if you're like, we have this speaker coming in, we're, or we're doing a speaker series and we want to have the same graphic with different photos of speakers, um, it allows you to just drag and drop. It, okay. makes, it, it makes it easier to, to templatize. Um, whereas if you didn't have a frame or a grid, you would have to be like, auto cropping or, or not auto cropping. You'd have to be manually crop, cropping and manually resizing and making sure things are fitting right. Whereas if it's, if I just go into elements and go down to like, if I want a circular frame, um, I can just drag and drop however many photos on top of that as I want. Right. And, 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 and it's, it's always going to be in the circle. It's always going to be the same size photo. It's going to auto crop to the, to okay. generally to the right, you know, to the person's face, um, things like that. So that's that's why frames and grids are are really your best friend with photos. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna lock this. We're coming up on six minutes, but um, I'm gonna lock this frame. Um, showing you how to resize text. The other, the, actually, there's a third way to resize text is to select the text box and just make the text box itself bigger. And you can see up here, um, up here, it's automatically changing the size of the text. Um, just last thing, as I said, pen is very, very large. I'll show you how to align things. So if you're looking at two separate boxes and you don't want to group them, which I could do, um, and move them as one, I want to, you can see how one text box is kind of off to the left side and the other text box is fairly centered. That's where you would click position. Um, and then I can align them to the top. I can align them to the left um, or I can align them to the center um, because of how I did that. That's now going on top of one another. Um, but if I align them to the center, you can see how that top text box kind of moved over. And now those, those are both centered on the page. Um, the other way that you could do that is if I had these text boxes um, like off here to the side, there are automatic like margin lines and grid lines that are showing up. And you can see this purple line down the middle um, is showing me, hey, that's the center of the page. Oh, and hey, you have the bottom text boxes equally spaced to, to the top text boxes. And it's a great way to make sure that everything is symmetrical, to make sure that everything is spaced evenly, that your ratios are proper um, and everything's looking good. Um, I think that's all we have time for right now. There's a lot more that you can do. Um, we didn't even touch on the, the tables aspect of things. Um, but as I said, Canva is really something that it's, it's a very big platform. Um, there's a lot you can do with it, um, and there's a lot of different features that it has, um, as well as integrations. I'll just actually I'll show you those. So if you scroll down here, you can import media from all sorts of different things. These are all automatic integrations that you can connect your Canva account with, um, and they're you know just a single sign-on. Once you're logged in, as long as both accounts are logged in, they're going to be connected. Um, so there's there's a lot that you can do with Canva and it is something that it's like, it's easiest if you just go in and start playing around with it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, there's the Canva um, Design Center, the Learning Center. Um, if I like, come over here to home, um, if you want, you know, deeper learning, then you can just come here to the design school. Um, there's also tons of videos on YouTube if you're getting confused by specific things. Um, that will help deepen your learning. But this is just, this is really just kind of showing you how to get started and how to get, you know, up and running where the most critical stuff was. I'm going to stop recording. I think, yeah, I think they're doing, an, they're doing an event next week, I think. Can, um, Canva events. Canva create, yeah, just because I, yep. I saw on the website. Uh, team management essentials, Canva for Teams workshop. 